All right, hello everybody. This is Raddy, and today I'm going to be showing you how I paint my space models gray power armor. This can be seen, for example, here on my latest model, Ragnar Black Main. Um, so I'm going to be showing this on this model, it's a Space Wolf Intercessor. Uh, I did the beard for this on a previous video, so if you're interested in how to sculpt green stuff beards, be sure to check that out. So first up we're going to prime the model black. I'm doing this by airbrush using Vallejo Premium uh, airbrush colors. And that's basically just what my local shop has. So any kind of black primer will do, I'm sure. You could do this by spray as well if you prefer that. And all the airbrushing material here is uh, sped up. It's two times speed compared to normal, uh, so that so that it won't take forever, forever to show you everything. So a nice even coat all over the model, and then we'll leave it to dry. And here the model's been primed black and dried up. And then we're going to move on to using Dawnstone. I use Airbrush Flow Improver and Airbrush Thinner to thin the Games Workshop Dawnstone down to a nice consistency. Consistency for airbrushing. Now, I airbrushed this from a zenithal position, as can be seen. So that means that airbrushing from above the model. That way the color will hit <coughs> the highest points of the model, um, rather than the deeper shadows. This point my airbrush uh, on some of the paint gets, uh, you know, stuck on the airbrush because uh, I'm using a really, really cheap crappy airbrush, um, but managed to fix it. Fix it there. So we slowly building up the dawnstone on the model. I'm doing some sprays from kind of a bit, uh, an angle below as well. The idea there is to kind of smoothen out the transitions a little bit so that the transition from black to gray won't be as harsh. That rather than being pure black, black it would be dark gray instead. Most of it is done from above. And we're still using Dawnstone here. Just waited a moment there for it to dry. Just slowly, gradually building that color up, mostly from a zenithal perspective. Now we're moving on to more targeted mm, airbrushing. And this way you can really make this kind of more dramatic color transitions. We're not doing anything too dramatic here with the gray, uh, but nonetheless it gives gives the model some nice depth to, the, depth, uh, to do these targeted airbrushes. So I'm targeting the chest plate, the toes, knees, uh, the top of the power pack, and well the hands, or the top parts of the hands I guess, and then the kind of ankles, I guess, uh, if you're looking at from behind the model. Every, anything that you kind of, your initial, initial uh, zenithal highlighting already highlighted, we're going to highlight even more with this dark targeted airbrushing with the Dawnstone. And the more coats we put of Dawnstone, the better it'll be. Then last little spray all over the model from a zenithal perspective and then that's done with the Dawnstone. Next up we're going to airbrush some admin stratum grey and similarly as the Dawnstone has been thinned down using thinner and a flow improver. And this one we won't really do the zenithal airbrushing anymore, we'll just do the targeted airbrushing. So you can see here I'm doing the toes of the model, the knees, thighs, the chest, power pack, shoulder pads, 
Although the shoulder pads, I'm not focusing a lot here, be uh, focusing on a lot here because I'm going to paint them uh, other colors by hand later on. They're not going to stay gray apart from the rims. Same with the knee pads. So I'm not really paying attention to the knee pads here too much. And just like before, slowly building up the color with careful sprays. And if you make some mistakes, for example, my airbrush has a tendency to um, tendency to get a little bit of a splatter on the model. You don't have to be too worried about that because you can always fix that later with weathering, which will be my next video after this armor tutorial. All right, next up, we still have the remainder of the admin gray there on the airbrush. We're going to add a little bit of white ink, acrylic artist inks. Um, any brand, well, I'm not sure if any brand, but this I believe was Amsterdam or something. Again, something I just found in my local art store. So uh, two drops of that mixed in to what I had left of the admin gray. It will only slightly tint the color to a little bit cooler, cooler gray. This is kind of an optional step that I like to take on, my kind of more maybe display, display level models. And this will bring the gray to a bit more, uh, or make it a bit cooler uh, in terms of the, in terms of the color which I rather like myself at least. And again, this is targeted to the kind of edges of the ankles, edges of the toes, really kind of the highest points where the light would, would hit the most. And honestly, when painting miniatures, it doesn't have to be super realistic, at least in, in my style. Uh, I don't aim towards like absolute realism, I aim to make it look cool. So wherever you think the highlights would look good, target them there. All right, and that's all of the airbrushing done. Now we're just going to give it a quick um, varnish. I'm showing here some splatter that I made on another intercessor. Uh, just as an example that that can happen, don't worry about it, and it can be fixed, you can easily make it in the battle damage later on by adding some black to it. Uh, so yeah, don't worry about it if you get some of that. I'll show that in my next tutorial. And this is how the model looks after airbrushing um, from the front. And this is the model from the back, if you need reference for where I tried to place the highlights. There's some splatter there, as you can see, but I'll fix it. Fix it later on with the weathering. Then we're moving on to recess shading. So I have some black on my palette and I also um, have some white there. And I'm going to mix those up with some of the medium that I have there as well uh, to make kind of a really dark gray. I haven't really found a paint of this color um, that I like. I'm sure there exists one in the GW range or Army Painter Vallejo, whatever range you prefer. But I haven't really found one or even tried to look for one. It's rather easy to mix it yourself and saves saves a bit of money not having to buy a ton of different pots of paint. And with this paint we start recess shading. So painting neat thin lines along the recesses 
of the model such as here. And I'm going to show you a neat little trick that I learned from Fenrir miniatures. So you can kind of feather out the recess shade by cleaning your brush after you've after you've done the shading and then going back with a clean brush do this kind of a wiping motion to feather out the shade towards uh, away from the recess and look it uh, give quite a nice uh, kind of shadow slash weathering effect so there I added some water there and now I'm starting to feather it out towards away from the away from the recess give some depth again and uh, water works uh, for this you need to be quite fast if you're not using any uh, anything to slow down the drying time uh, I'm a dirty brush licker myself so that helps with cleaning your brush quickly to get a clean brush to kind of go back in and dab dab the paint around because acrylics tend to dry quite fast but it comes with practice if you just fiddle with it for long enough you'll figure out how to do this part and this is an optional step I don't do this for regular rank and file usually just for display display stuff really you could as well just do the regular recess shades just the lines without the feathering and the feathering is only done on surfaces where one of the panels is higher up than the other. For, so for example, this recess I won't feather out because both of the panels are on the same level. So there's, I, I don't know what direction, like there's no direction that the shadow or the feathering would naturally go to. So this is just going to be black lining in between the panels. So I'm going to show you this panel as well. I'm trying to demonstrate the feathering a little bit more. So with a clean brush, just trying to smudge the paint away from the away from the recess a little bit. And even with acrylics, remember that you can always fix quite a lot with just water and a clean brush. So if you make tiny mistakes don't let that bother you too much just be fast to try and fix it and I suggest doing this for the first time on an experimental model to kind of get the gist of how it's how it's done and again shout out to Fenrir miniatures for for this technique uh, go check out his his YouTube channel. I'm, I'm sure he explains it probably better than I do here. And then I'm just going back there, adding a little bit more black to make it make it look nice. You could, if you're not doing the feathering, you could as well use, for example, null oil if you're more co uh, comfortable with that rather than dark paint. I find that using paints instead of washes gives a little bit more crisp results but it requires a bit more brush control so that's a personal preference thing I used to do it with null oil before as well for many years and just recently changed to this dark gray paint instead so after this panel I'm going to finish the rest of camera and show you how it looks with all of the recess shading done. There's an example of uh, what the feathering looks like more closer. And this is all of the black lining done now on the miniature. I'm showing where I put the feathering, mostly so the feet, and then at the chest plate, mm, there's some on the backpack here, under that thing, um, 
under the uh, what are those called elbow pads I guess but not here since the panels are on the same level compared to for example this one where the further panel is higher than the panels at the back back and then the belt also there's some some of the feathering there around the belt then here are my uh, here's my palette for the highlight colors so first we have dawnstone then we have admin gray then we have gray sear white and gray sear mixed and then pure white we're going to start with dawnstone and we're using that to edge highlight just the darkest parts so there's for example these parts under the gun here where the gray hasn't really reached when we were airbrushing so the shaded parts those we are going to edge highlight with dawnstone this is a pretty bad example here because obviously my edge highlight there was quite thick uh, but it gives me a nice opportunity to show how I go back and neaten up edge highlights if needed. So I highlight the edge there with downstone. And then I, after I'm done, done with this edge highlight, I'll mix a little bit of, of a darker, darker gray to neaten up the edge highlight a little bit so that it's not not as thick sorry for the focus here uh, on the palette i'm sure you'll figure out what's happening so there going back to neaten it up a little bit so again you know mistakes happen it's useful to learn how to fix them and how to hide them honestly with the weathering and all that kind of stuff it's always a good way to fix stuff then we're going uh, for um, admin gray and that's our main highlight color basically every edge except for those really dark ones are going to uh, is going to get highlighted with admin gray i'm showing you all of the different highlights on this leg panel first but normally I would do the whole model with admin gray first, then the whole model with gray sear uh, on, on the parts that need gray sear and so on. With the admin gray, I sometimes go like this, but I do it twice on the same area to strain, strengthen the edge highlight a little bit more. Then the gray sear, we use uh, a little bit more sparingly towards the parts where the light would hit more such as here uh, as I've highlighted it during the airbrushing part it looks like the light is hitting towards uh, hitting more towards the bottom part of the panel so that's where we will highlight it with gray sear then white and gray sear even more sparingly towards even even more towards the end of the panel towards the lighter point of the panel and towards corners like so and lastly pure white just really really sparingly a dot on the corners really make them pop a little bit that's that part's done now I'll do it all over the model so first admin gray on all edges then gray sear a little bit more sparingly towards the lighter areas then the mix of white and gray sear even more sparingly and lastly the dotted pure white and this is the model with all of the edge highlights complete um, as you can see i've tried to focus the lighter lighter edge highlights on the same places where I've also uh, focused the highlights on with the airbrush. Normally I'd probably paint everything else first before finishing the armor but did it for the tutorial now like this and next time I'm going to show you how to do the weathering so how to get your model from 
uh, this point to looking a bit more like this one here, also hiding maybe some mistakes that you might have made and I, that I certainly made. So thanks for watching and be sure to check my other videos out and uh, leave a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. All right, bye bye.